Just like we can use cases and patterns to pick out parts of a list, we can use string cases and string patterns to pick out parts of a string. So let me give you an example of that. So here's some text that I pasted in from Wikipedia. And let's use string cases. And let me start it without any pattern. Let me just say, what are the cases inside this string where it's the letter lowercase a? So if here it resulted in a list, just like cases does. And if I were to evaluate the length of this list, that would be how often does the letter lowercase a show up? What if I want a followed by L? Hey, well, I could do this. Hey, that's how often the pair AL shows up consecutively in this string. But these examples so far, they don't use string patterns. So how can I work in a string pattern? Well, uh, just like with regular patterns as opposed to string patterns, they're denoted with an underscore. But if I try something like this, it doesn't work. So how do I say A? followed by any character. Well, I need to tell Mathematica, how do I like join these two together? Like how do I put this string immediately followed by this string? And you might think of string join, if you remember that function, but that doesn't work with this pattern. So I need to use a string pattern or a string expression to join these together. And that's denoted in Mathematica with two tilde signs. And so this is all of, the, all of the occurrences in this text where it's A followed by another letter. Okay, so notice here, for example, that that other letter or that other character can be a white space. So that's allowed. What if I want to have A followed by two other characters? Okay, so this says A followed by any letter or character, followed by any letter or character. And you might have thought, okay, well, could you have just done two underlines? And no, you can't, because two underlines stands for any string of length one or more. And so in this case, it's created, like, let's check what the length of this is. Can you predict it? It's just length one. So it's picked out the longest possible match. And what's the longest possible match? Well, here's the first lowercase a in the text. And then the blank blank is going to be as long as possible. Okay, so it's this entire thing here. What if I don't want it to be as long as possible? Then I can do that with the phrase shortest. So this is telling Mathematica, try to find the shortest match of this. And so that's good, although because it's allowed to be the shortest, it's always finding just two characters. If I were to put three underlines, then it's allowed to be even shorter because three underlines stands for zero or more characters. Two underlines stands for one or more characters. So what if I went A and then I really want it to be a full word? How can I do that? Well, with the only exception of this one, Full words are always, uh, always finished with a space, or there's always a space that comes afterwards. Okay, even if it ends in a period, like this doesn't begin with an A, but imagine that started with an A, then we would pick out this. So like, let me just put in like amazing here. And let me say A followed by anything followed by space. And so what I was trying to point out with that amazing example is here is the word, okay, and then it also had this period and also had this space. And maybe I want words that start with A also. So uh, one way to do that is to put a space before the A. Okay, now I'm getting space, then the letter A, Okay, that matches this part. Then this is allowed to be anything. And then there's supposed to be another space after it. And just like with, with cases and usual patterns as opposed to string patterns, I can name this underscore underscore. Okay, so for example, I can call it X. So that didn't change anything. But the advantage of naming it, okay, this is called a named pattern 
is I can now use a rule or a replacement to bring out that x. So this is saying find all the matches of this pattern and then replace it with x. Hey, and if I wanted, here I could do, for example, string join x comma x. And so don't worry about these warnings, it still worked. So then it replaced this analysis comma analysis comma or this algorithm algorithm. And we could have also done that using string patterns. I also could have done x tilde tilde x. Hey, that gives me the exact same result. And it also gets rid of that warning from before. Let's do a, a one more example. Let me, let me delete some of this. And let's find all patterns of the form A followed by any single letter. So notice how now it's just one underscore rather than two underscores. So that's only allowed to be one letter. And so uh, what does this do? This picks out all of the triples inside of text that are of the form A followed by two of the same letter. Okay, well, what if I named these different things? Okay, then it's still triples, but there's no requirement that the second and third letter be the same.